What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of Justin Jefferson's best route running highlights and why he is one of the best route runners in the NFL. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you guys would like a daily gym and on-field workout schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. It's 500-plus wide receiver drills, gym exercise with sets and reps mapped out into a daily schedule for you guys to follow. We also give examples of each drill and each exercise so it's easy for you to understand. So again, very first link in that description below. If you're interested, let's get started with this video. So this first route from Justin Jefferson, this is going to be almost that like reverse whip route that he runs, I guess you can say, almost like a T route, a return route, almost very similar to a jerk route. So let's play this thing full speed and let's talk about why this works. So anytime that we have a DB who's in man coverage, the details of your route are insanely important, right? Because there are three ways to sell a route, right? There's three ways to sell this thing. So if you're running like, let's say just a basic out and up route, there's three ways to try to get this DB to crash down on this. You got to sell this thing with speed. So that means that when you run to the out route, you got to run hard. You have to sell this thing with your stride. That means when you break to this out route, you can't be taking choppy steps, not going anywhere, preparing for the break. And you have to sell this thing with body language. Now, why is your body language important? Because a DB in man coverage, his eyes are supposed to be watching your hips. So when you guys have to run a route like this, whether it's, you know, a whip route, whether it's a jerk route, whether it's this type of like almost return route, you see how Jefferson, when he puts the brakes on, he drops on his dime, he sits his butt down, he's bringing his chin to his knee, that helps him decelerate. Now, when you decelerate on a dime like this, that puts the DB on alert, but his eyes are still disciplined. He is still watching our hips. So anytime that you guys are running a whip, Hip route, an out in route, a T route, you have to try to turn your hips parallel to the line of scrimmage. That is what got this DB greedy. That's what got Gilmore's eyes to the inside and got him to bite simply because Jefferson paid attention to this little detail. It's not just about your eyes. Because trust me, fellas, I see it all the time when guys run whip routes. They'll break down and they'll be like half in with their shoulders, half out. And if he never fully commits, this DB is going to be able to sit on this route. Him turning his belly button to the line of scrimmage, hips and shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. That little detail is what will get every single DB to crash and get you to get more separation on double moves, single move routes, the work. So remember, when it comes to selling your routes, fellas, we got to have speed, we got to have stride, and we got to be very mindful of that little detail, body language. Okay, so now this next example here from this route from Justin Jefferson, he's going to be running this like 10 to 12 yard dig route versus an inside shade press coverage DB. So what all great route runners are able to do, and you see this with Jefferson's releases, he has such a high football IQ because I'm sure he has a great pre-snap process. He knows how to study film. He knows what DBs are going to do even before the ball is snapped. So what is a pre-snap process? You're looking for three specific things on a DB. Number one, you're looking for his leverage. So is he going to be lined up inside shade? shaded, which means he has inside leverage. That means he's trying to take away the slant, take away the dig, force you to the outside of the sideline. Or is he outside leverage, which means he's doing the opposite. He's trying to take away the fade, the out route, the comeback, and force you inside to his help. So when you identify his leverage, that tells you a lot about the route. So Jefferson has to run a 10 to 12 yard dig versus inside shade press coverage. So what do you think he might do here? So let's play at full speed, then we'll break it down. So a lot of guys will teach if you have an inside breaking route, you got to take an inside release. But Jefferson doesn't do that here because the spacing of the play matters. So you see what this slot wide receiver is doing here. He's running a vertical route. So this is called a dagger concept. So a dagger concept is when you have a seam from the slot and a dig from the outside wide receiver. Now, when this TB's lined up inside shade, remember, he's trying not to give up the dig. He does not want to let you run an inside breaking route. So if he would have forced this release and given a jab and tried to take this inside release, DB is going to stay patient. His sole purpose with this coverage is don't give up the inside. Don't give up your leverage. So he's going to force Jefferson to the inside and he's going to run into the seam. The spacing of the play is going to be off. So what he does is he takes what this DB gives him. He takes the outside release. So the reason why this is such a good release and he's able to get speed is Jefferson comes off the ball with a faster tempo than we're used to seeing from him, right? What does Jefferson love to do off the ball? It's very similar to Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams loves to do that little hesitation skip and then take off. Same with Jefferson. You see it all the time. He'll do this little hezzy and then go beat you on a fade. He'll do this little hezzy run up and then break on an out route. And we're going to look at those two routes in a second on this video. But off the ball, he catches this DB sleeping, anticipating the hesitation move. 
He just bursts off the ball and he goes fast and he takes the outside release because spacing on this play is important. Me personally, fellas, you know, we, we train a lot of wide receivers. We go to different states. We host all these camps across the country and we see a ton of wide receivers. And what I judge a good route runner on is his ability to be able to create separation in uncomfortable situations. Taking an outside release on an inside breaking route is uncomfortable. But if you trust it and you have good mechanics at the top of the route and you know how to run the route, you're going to be able to create separation. So you see Jefferson, what is he doing here? He's working to stack. He's getting skinny. He's trying to get this DB trailing his back hip. That's what restacking is. So when he gives this move at the top, he could get a little separation. And you see, we have room to run out of the break. This seam cleared this receiver, this DB out of there. We didn't run into it. The spacing wasn't off because he didn't force the release. Now, everybody's hesitant to do this. Because what if this we don't stack the DB? What if this DB's faster than me? What if I'm back here and this DB's right here? What do you think Jefferson would do? The break would change. You would take this inside arm, you'd put it on the back of the DB's shoulder, the back of his hip, and you would slip under him. They call that a throw-by move. And fellas, that's going to be just as efficient if you know how to put the brakes on and you have proper technique. So fellas, a great route runner, which is what Jefferson is, probably... I think, honestly, the best, I, him and Devontae Adams, it's a toss-up. Same with Stephon Diggs, but got to be in the top three, right? Best route runners in the game. They all take what DBs give them. They never force it because it's about running realistic routes. And one-on-ones, oh, yeah, you could give a move. You could get rerouted and run a dig and catch it on the opposite ash and look real good. That's one-on-ones. That's not a real game. And against a disciplined DB, that is not going to fly. Let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson taking what this DB gives and then working outside to get separation on this route. So now... Let's look at this next example here. And again, this is a great example of having a high route running IQ. So this DB is in a, like a press bail situation and he is shaded a little bit to the outside, right? So pre-snap process, like we talked about, there's three things that you're looking at to dictate what you do as a wide receiver off the line. Number one, you're trying to identify the DB's leverage because that tells you about the coverage, right? So in this case, this DB's outside leverage, right? Second thing you're trying to identify, how close or how far is he? This DB's maybe about three yards away, but he's in a press bail. So it's dropping into like cover three, for example. Let's say it's cover three. And then last but not least, you want to identify the coverage. So this DB's looking to the inside and has his front hip turned to Jefferson. Looks a lot like zone to me, right? Press bail zone coverage, right? So if it were man, he would probably be more squared up and he'd have his eyes on Jefferson. But if we got this look, so we know that when he's outside leverage, what is his responsibility? Protect the outside. Do not get beat on the fade. Do not get beat on the out. Do not get beat on the comeback. He is going to do whatever possible to protect that area. And that is kind of where he opens up and gives this little blind spot here. So if I have to run a 10-yard out route, a lot of wide receivers would think, okay, I'm just going to run to his blind spot and break this thing off. But here's the thing. You're at the top of the numbers. If you just run to his blind spot and he squeezes you to the sideline and you break to this out route, you don't have a whole lot of space. So let's play this thing full speed. Let's watch what Jefferson does. He attacks the inside shoulder in the inside hip of this DB to give himself room to run this out route. Because it's just like that dig, fellas. You've got to give the quarterback space to throw you open. So if we just try to run around him and get to this blind spot and break, that's not enough room. And if this DB plays it well, that's that's an easy pick six for him if that quarterback throws it late. We got to get to the depth of the route. We got to be on time and we got to give the quarterback spacing. So you see how he attacks the inside shoulder, attack the inside shoulder. He puts the brakes on. This is that throw by that we were talking about. And he's able to slip under with plenty of room to accelerate. This isn't even a ton of separation either, but when you have room to run out of the break because you know how to structure your routes, you will be a more successful wide receiver. You will get more targets because you are running quarterback friendly routes. So let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson attacking the inside shoulder, flipping the DB, and then getting separation on that break. So now, next two routes I want to look at here. This is what I meant by pairing your releases and pairing your routes together. So we talked about it in the very, very first example of this thing. How do you sell routes? Whether that's a double move, whether that's you're running a comeback, what are the three things that'll help you sell a route? It's going to be your speed, it's going to be your stride and it's going to be your body language. But another thing that wide receivers love to do or that great wide receivers love to do is pair their releases together on certain routes. They want to make things look identical because that will get a DB anticipating 
And that is when you get separation. So let's look at this first strategy from Jefferson against Marshawn Lattimore. Inside shade. This is very similar to that release that they thought he was going to do on that dig route. So he comes off, gives a little hesitation, then beats him deep on a fade. Full speed, got him by a step, and now he's got him. So now, let's look at this next route. Let's watch what he does here. He comes off the ball, same release, breaks it off on an out route. Made it look the exact same, exact same thing until the break right in stride. Again, when you come off the ball, how do you sell the route? You sell the route with speed, body language, and your stride. And that is what's going to get this DB to commit. And imagine combining that with the exact same hesitation release, maybe the exact same like kind of crossover release if you want to do that. And when you got the confidence to cut in stride like this, there's so much separation to be had, fellas. So guys... If you want to be a better route runner, you want to improve your routes, you want to understand why these guys are so good, just look at the things that they do. It's not complicated either, you guys. All these great receivers all have maybe, you know, they're not doing 20 different moves in a game. They're doing maybe five or six things, and they are perfectionists at those five or six things. And that's what it takes, you guys. Like, we go over a lot of different techniques on this page. But if you're not confident in those techniques, you probably shouldn't use them. Like, you want to use five to six things that you are freaking confident in. So if it's that slide-and-go release like Jefferson does and that speed release that looks kind of similar, if you're confident in that, let's add that to your playbook. And you know when to use that due to a good pre-snap process. You understand pre-snap process. You understand when to use certain things. You understand how to sell routes. That's a recipe to be a great receiver and to be a great route runner. So I'm going to play these two clips again so you guys can see the, how they're both identical. Hezzy release. Let's get him on a fade. Maybe he's sitting to the inside. Maybe he's anticipating a slant. Hezzy release. He's thinking fade now. Break this thing off on an out route. That's how you create separation. Be unpredictable. All right, fellas. I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, questions at all don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below we always appreciate the feedback it's always great to hear from you guys and again fellas um we are going to be um when you would like an eight-week wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that, give you guys a lot of value. It's completely mapped out for you. Everything you need to know, every single example, sets and reps. It's pretty much like you just get the program and it is all set, ready for you to go. So again, very first link in that description below if you want some more information. I'll see you guys next time.